I mean, science originally, you know, 400 years ago was was questioning the narratives usually put up by the church then. I mean, I was talking with exactly. Neil deGrasse Tyson last night and we talked about Galileo looking into the skies in 1600 and 1610, questioning these these ideas and putting science in the forefront for 400 years where we used the scientific method to give us this information. And for many years, centuries even, religion was maybe the nemesis of science. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you had this conversation briefly with Dr. Jordan Peterson, and it seems that recently that that might not necessarily be the case. Maybe the institutions of government, media, maybe even in science, are the, and the dogmas that they create are the enemies or nemeses of science itself. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the whole. Uh, I mean, science suffers as does everything else from a, a phenomenon called confirmation bias, which is a, a human frailty, which we all suffer from. Me too which is that when you get an idea in your head, you, you go and look out for evidence that supports it. You don't go and look out for evidence that contradicts it. Um, uh, and fair enough, you know, that's the way we all work. But that leaves you vulnerable to ignoring inconvenient evidence and plowing on ahead long after there's no evidence that you're right. And uh, religion says we call that faith, you know, that's what we do, <laughs> so that's our business, fine. But science ought to say, uh, no, I want to kick the tires on your idea, I want to check whether or not it really works. And um, the way it's done that is not by Professor A challenging his own, trying to disprove his own idea. Um, it's never been that actually. It's Professor B saying, I think Professor A is wrong and I hate his guts, and let's have an argument, you know, and that's the way it works. And science has always been very decentralised. It's in universities all over the country, you know, and that helps this process. So, you know, Oxford says Cambridge is wrong on something, or, you know, Newcastle says Reading is wrong, or whatever it is, you know, and, and because you're, you're from different institutions, you can have the row. And this has happened from time to time. You get camps and, you know, people disagreeing and so on. Now that process is dying out and you're getting more and more on lots of topics a consensus. You're seeing it in Alzheimer's research, for example, where the people who said, I think these um, amyloid plaques are symptoms, not causes, and you're barking up the wrong tree, were shut out. They were silenced. They were told that their, their work was not to be published. Uh, you're seeing it in climate, where people who say, yes, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a catastrophe. Let's look at some of the evidence that, 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 that uh, suggests that we're overreacting or something. Whoa, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, you're seeing it in uh, COVID research, particularly in the last three years, you know, where anyone who said, I think lockdown's a mistake, I think the vaccines are being mishandled, um, I think uh, the idea that this came out of a, a food market uh, may be wrong. It wasn't possible for people to challenge each other because you've got these very big monolithic funding structures, Wellcome Trust, government, whatever, that fund basically the orthodoxy and they don't fund the heterodoxy. Yeah. You said you were doing some climate research recently, I think just for your own, and you noticed that back in the 90s, there seemed to be some very objective science, but over yeah. the last 10 years, it all seemed to go be kind of a, in a politically correct nature. Yes, and it's very normative. It's sort of, you know, um, uh, it, we, we, it, we should believe this, not we, here's what we think. You know, it, it's, it's become very politicized, that area. Uh, and it's a pity, because there's some fascinating things. To, you know, we don't really know why the ice ages happen when they do and why they end where they do. We think it's more to do with the Milankovitch cycles of the Earth going around the sun uh, and its orbit changing than to do with carbon dioxide. But people think carbon dioxide has a feedback effect in that. But funnily enough, nobody really talks about that. You know, this is an unknown. The science is about the unknown. It's not about the known, you know. Science isn't a catalogue of facts. It's a, it's a search for new mysteries to solve. Um, and, uh, you know, we ought to be able to say, look, here's something we don't know. Don't let's pretend we do. And 
we're finding this out not because we want to upset some political apple cart, but because we want to know. <laughs> Uh, but you find people saying, well, if you find out that it's not anything to do with carbon dioxide, that'll encourage uh, deniers. Well, sorry, I don't care who it encourages. I want to know the truth. I, I, the, for me, the, there's a Solzhenitsyn quote, which is that truth is more important than consequence. A lot of people in this virus debate are saying um, uh, we can't find out because of the consequences we're saying that's wrong. You must always find out the truth, whatever the consequences. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then, they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us.
and let's take back our financial freedom forever.